What's going on guys? Welcome back to the vlog. I hope uh, you enjoyed the last video and let's move forward with this one. So today, like I told you in a previous video, we're going to go on to drift event or drift practice, I should say, August 30th. And there's uh, an issue that I need to address before we're going to go there. So the problem is my intercooler piping goes right through my wheel well. And when I'm at full lock, the wheels are actually rubbing on the intercooler piping. And these are uh, 18 by 10 and a half plus 22 I believe with a 255 uh, 255 tire so they're kind of wide for the front so what I was wondering if I can put a spacer in there just to move this wheel a little bit out and see if it will help any uh, see if it will help the the problem so I do have a spacer in the back I believe it's like two and a half or uh, I believe it's two and a half or five millimeter maybe spacer so I was gonna jack up the car take that spacer out real quick and uh, move it to the front and then test it out and see if that helps any so hopefully I can address this because I don't have any skinnier tire that I can run uh, to fix this problem and I kind of need to have the full ability of left to right at the track so let me jack this car up and we're going to move the spacer from front to back and then turn it to see if we get any more clearance. So I have one of these universal spacers that you will get probably like a napper or something. And we're just going to measure it real quick how big this spacer is. And that is, yeah, five millimeters. So this is a five millimeter spacer. And let's just put it on. Let me actually show you where it's rubbing at. You see it right there. Right there is where my tire, you can see the tire marks. You can see an indentation from the tire. So I'm trying to get away from that. All right, let's put this five millimeter on and let's see if this helps out. All right, so basically there's a little bit of room now. It was a lot better, so I would still have to go up and down the driveway just so the car settles down. But let me do that. Let me go up and down the driveway and then do a full, full lock and see where we're at. Uh, boys it's not gonna work five millimeter spacer and it's still touching so I'm gonna have to come up with a different set of wheels I have some OEM wheels that I still have so I'm gonna throw one of those on and see what that looks like that one should be all right because it's a nine and a half and it's I don't know eight and a half wide or something like that but while I was looking at that uh, clearance I just found that one of my B nuts on my oil cooler took a crap and it's leaking. I'm gonna have to order a, I'm gonna have to order a dash 10 180 AM fitting, but let me get a OEM wheel real quick and we're gonna try this one more time
I'll just put this OEM wheel on and that thing also rubs so it really it just touches a little bit less but still does right over here in the wheel well so I kind of like the black wheel I don't know maybe I should get some black rims what do you think I'm sure I'll stay with the dip dish wheels or the black wheels not those something nicer I don't know. Anyway, it's basically going in and cutting some of this pipe off and some also on the bottom so I can move the whole thing over. So I think there, there is still room between the pipe and the frame. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the bumper off since we're going to take it off anyway to fix that uh, B nut. I'm going to replace that which is located right over here. and. I guess I don't have to take it off. I don't know. I'm gonna pull the bumper off because there's no way I can take the cinder cooler pipe off. I'm just gonna keep bumping into. Yeah, because there's a blow off valve over there and everything, so I do have to pull it off. So, anyway, what we're gonna do is just pull this off, chop a little bit. Uh, we're gonna measure what the clearance is between there, and then we're just gonna chop the same off on each side on the inner cooler and the throttle body side and scooch everything forward anyway let's get the bumper pulled off and let's get that thing chopped or at least measured today and before we even do that i have a couple parts that i want to install and i'm going to show you what i got on the inside i have this plastic piece that is broken and I have a new one that I got off of our other Z that was stripped down and these compartments that unlock the little tabs up at the top are broken so I got both of these storage compartments and I got a new one of these uh, cigarette lighter pieces so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and pop these things out however that comes out I think it just pulls right out there's a little clip on the end there. So we're gonna pop this off right now. I'm gonna take a better look. And I believe these things are just, yeah, these things just pop right out. So I'm gonna replace these guys and I'll show you what I got. Basically identical. They're still black. There you go. Nice and easy. kind of hard to do this with one hand let me move this chair up and put the uh, put them in real quick check this out brand new brand new everything works clean them up both cigarette lighter cover that's not broken also got a uh, a mat holder, the little hook that goes right here. I never had one, so my mat was always sliding. So I got one of those. And also got these three caps that go right here. I was missing them for the longest time. So I'm pretty pumped. Interior is like almost 100% complete. I think what else I'm gonna do is put this uh, seat switch in because mine's all busted and my seat barely ever moves you gotta really mess with it for it to move i then want to pull that seat out real quick and uh put the new switch in and hopefully this one works better than the old one all right guys the seat is out and my wire harness for some reason was stuck under this bracket where this bolt was going and it was like jammed in there so i had to take this bolt off which is right here and uh, get my wire harness from under it. So hopefully yours is not that way. Maybe that was the reason uh, my switch broke, as you can see it right here, how smashed it was. So maybe that was the reason I just kind of rubbed through. I'm just gonna feed mine. The same way I found this one, except I'm not gonna pinch it by this bracket. right there I 
And this basically went like this. Bam. I gotta go find some hardware for this right now so we can secure it. And then I'm gonna vacuum the inside under the chair, I mean under the seat, and we're gonna put this back in. Check this out. Every time. There's a little oil. Nice. As funny as that sounds, I'm pretty excited about that switch working. It hasn't worked in about five years. So I'm pretty stoked that I got a new one finally but not for too long we'll get some bucket seats in there all right boys so the game plan is to get this car flipped back around and kind of just back it in in this third bay and get the front end jacked up pull the front bumper and the wheels off and then try to mess around get those intercooler tubes off and try to chop it as i was telling you before try to scooch it forward but and on the front and on the turbo side what we're going to do is probably rotate the turbo housing a little bit so this pipe will scooch forward and like I said this pipe this side is not bad at all it barely touches it's this one that's a problem so I don't think with a five millimeter spacer on the wheel and this thing slightly rotated I think it's going to work just fine and over here uh, we're just going to have to finesse this one and you know, put a spacer on, cut it, scooch it in a little bit, but first we're gonna measure the distance that it has to, that's allowed to be moved in. Another thing what I'm gonna go do right now is I'm gonna order two five millimeter spacers from Z1, and I'm gonna order a Dash 10 180 uh, AN fitting so we can replace the leaky one that I have on there now. And one more thing that I do need for this car is a weather strip for this uh, windshield right over here because whenever we were at the drag strip it got so hot that day that the glue melted and the thing actually uh, flew out uh, whenever we were driving so when I was pulling up to the pit it was just slapping on the roof which was kind of funny but so those are the three things that I need to order right now so they'll be on their way and that should be it. I just gotta figure out how to, you know, get the steering angle right so we don't clip those pipes and rip it out of the track. This is a different day. Last time we left off, as I saw, I said, I'm gonna go inside and order some parts. And I basically didn't come back out. Uh, so I didn't do anything else. But as you see, the cars on jacks, the bumpers off. And I did order a uh, uh, fitting for the oil cooler leak. So <clears throat> I have a dash tan. Uh, 180 degree Fregala fitting which we're gonna install today and I'll show you what it looks like right now where it's leaking at and then I did order two uh, spacers from Z1 they're five millimeter spacers for the front to give us a little bit more clearance on our steering get that wheel away from those intercooler piping but we still gotta work on that and then I also got the weather strip for the windshield so this has to go in at some point and I also got the cover for the battery compartment I never had one since I bought the car so I'm pretty excited to have one installed it should look a lot cleaner now so you don't have to look at the wires in there which I'm stoked about all right guys well this is where it's leaking from and you can see when i wiggle this you can see this part moves back and forth a lot which is you can just pull on us and that should not be this way 
So this is uh, as soon as the car's running, there's oil just coming out of coming right out of here. So I'm gonna go first thing I'm gonna do is replace this. So let's go ahead and take care of this first issue, and then we're gonna move on to our inner cooler piping, and this is where you can see the tire marks. Uh, so we're gonna try to uh, get this fixed up a little bit, and here's the other side. Same deal, but a lot less, but still uh, not good. So let's move forward and get this fitting replaced now, and then uh, we'll take a look at the inner cooler piping. All right guys, so this is out, this is the old one. And uh, just looking at it, looks like the pin that goes inside this little hole right here, like you'll see on this one, the little shiny piece is gone. And that's why it's all wobbly. So this one is no good. I don't know if we're just uh, defect in manufacturing or what. And it might've been this way when I was putting this in, I just didn't notice it. And actually, now it showed its uh, weakness after driving on it. But there's a new one. And I'm not going to replace this part, this uh, color that goes on the line itself, because the other one's fine. I mean, all it does is just holds the hose in. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the new fitting on. All right, so I measured the uh, distance between the pipe and the frame, and we had about a uh, uh, inch and uh, three quarter. So I'm not gonna cut, cut inch and three quarter off because that's gonna put us. That was about right there. So that's gonna cut too much pipe off. Pipe off, and then plus my bong for my temp sensors right here. So that's not gonna work out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut. I marked basically three quarter or 0.8 of an inch right over here and I'm going to cut this off all the way across and what's going to happen is we're going to cut this brim off where the clamp sits so it doesn't slip off but now so when this is going to be gone the clamp is going to be sitting on this side and that's actually going to be able to hold on to this weld which is fine so let me go ahead and cut this and uh, we're going to test fit Alrighty, so I cut this off now. So this is all cut, like we talked about. And I cleaned that edge up so it's nice and smooth. Everything's good. There's a sensor right there. So I couldn't go any further as you see, because the clamp is gonna be sitting right here, right on the inside of this. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and install this pipe right now and put the spacer on. And uh, most likely we're gonna have to down drag the car just to see. Um, if this is going to clear because right now the wheel the suspension is sagging and it's not going to be sitting where it, where it's at uh, in relation to this spot so let me get all this tightened up uh installed down jack the car and then we'll take a look what we got all right guys so i just down jack the car and looks like we have success we actually have about two inches of space now between the wheel and the pipe i don't know if i'll be able to show you that but we'll try to show you uh, let me get a flashlight right there before there was no space so we have a, some kind of I'm trying to get a good angle I don't know very hard to tell but anyway you see that spacing right there so that is where the wheel and the other side the forward side is the pipe and that's the wheel and we have room so that is good i was really worried about we're not gonna be able to make it and that is and that is with a uh five millimeter spacer from z1 and like i said we cut about a uh, three quarter off 
our pipe by the throttle body side and I did not take anything off the inner cooler side so we're able to make that happen but I'm still gonna go ahead and drive around at some point here I really wanna start the car up and leak check this fitting right now make sure it's good while we're on the ground and then I'm gonna I have a five millimeter on the other side I'm gonna turn it and make sure to see if that one clears I don't think it will but I did not try it last time I was doing this so let's take a look This side does have a lot of space, check it out. I just shut the car off, I want to go ahead and actually bolt everything down, put all the clamps on and uh, go for a drive and actually test everything out, make sure it works as it looks. So let me put all the clamps on and we are going to go for a ride. Alright boys, we just came back from the ride, I looked around. Um, our fitting is good on the oil cooler, no leaks there. And uh, while I was doing uh, figure eights back and forth, there was no rubbage going on, going left, but that might have been very slightly going to the right side, uh, steering to the right, which is our tube that we cut just a second ago. And uh, I really don't know what else to do besides redoing a whole pipe, um, just welding a new one. But I think for now we'll do. We'll see how it acts once we go to the track and see actually, you know, if it's going to rub a lot or whatnot. But right now I went to a pretty bumpy parking lot where it was just, you know, compressing a lot. And uh, I think I heard it, but very, very little. So I'm not that worried about it. I think it will be okay. If not, um, it is what it is. We're going to have to redo the pipe. We have to weld something else up. But as I came back, there's more issues. My front main seal just decided to check out and it sprayed oil all over the engine bay, which sucks. I'm gonna show you that real quick. I don't know if you can see it. But there it is, there's oil all over. There's oil right there, there's one drop sitting there. I just kinda wiped it off so it doesn't leak a lot, but it looks like it's coming from the, coming from the, uh, plastic cover, the timing chain cover, so I think it's our front main seal, if not, we're just going to figure out what it is. But that has to be taken care of before we go to the track, so I'm going to save this for a different video, and I'm going to have to pull this front end off and investigate what happened, because there was a quite a bit of oil, actually it was spitting out of the vents. Uh, through the hood onto the windshield as I was driving back as I got onto the uh, serpentine belt and I was just shooting all the way all over the place. That sucks, but what are you gonna do? Race car life, just gotta fix it and move forward. But for today's video guys, that will be it. And I will see you in the next one. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.